Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So I'm reading for Sagittarius Energy for Wednesday. Um, I'm getting that you could be a little bit overly eager about something, a little bit overly enthusiastic about something, and maybe um, so focused and enthusiastic about what you want, you're not actually realising the needs of others, so just be kind of aware of that. Um, you know, you may be trying to push a little bit, you know, what you want to do or like, what you want to do or your ideas on sort of the people without necessarily like paying attention to what they're needing just side message there um so i'm reading for sagittarius energy for wednesday if maybe you're reading it may not be your reading i'm going to go through some clarifiers to kind of like help you figure that out um if you like this reading please do leave me a like if you haven't subscribed yet i'd appreciate you hitting that subscribe bell it really helps out the channel and it's free to do and if anything particularly resonates please do feel free to leave me a comment down below love to read the comments uh and thank you to those of you who've been supporting the channel so far and engaging really appreciate it and uh, yeah, of course, share with your Sagittarius friends if you feel like that would be a good idea to do. Uh, okay, what else? You don't have to be Sagittarius sun sign for this to resonate. You may have Sagittarius in your chart or you may be interacting with a Sagittarius. Uh, Sagittarius is a lovely, fun energy. Your energy feels really fun and enthusiastic and a little bit, uh, they're showing me um, like i'm like hearing fire on all cylinders but they seem um i'm seeing like a foot going down on a pedal of a car so uh you know like the accelerator it's like there's no easing gently into it it's like the foot like straight onto the accelerator is like full speed ahead so yeah you may have to just pull back on your own reins a little bit um that yeah <laughs> very enthusiastic about something i think if not now then coming up um i think that whenever it hits you'll completely forget about this reading <laughs> just be like because all your focus will be on whatever it is that you want to do uh okay your song was a big yellow taxi by rita aura so i don't know if new york is something for somebody um i don't know if you get in a taxi somewhere getting an uber somewhere uh but the song of course is about uh you know taking uh green spaces and turning them into commercial or industrialized spaces uh paved paradise and put up a parking lot so uh maybe you're being a little bit uh eco like eco aware about your green spaces and trying to make sure they're protected and uh you know not developed on uh perhaps you're looking at planting some green green stuff in industrial areas so maybe like you're petitioning to get some trees planted in your local neighborhood something like this maybe you're just doing gardening it does feel like the Sagittarius need to be free. The Sagittarius need to be, you know, the horse running through the open field. So perhaps you're really looking to get out of the house, to enjoy nature, to go on a walk, to spend time in your garden even. It just has that kind of the need for nature that Sagittarius so often has. Um, I feel like I'm breathing a bit fast, which again is part of, I think, the enthusiasm that's coming through. Like, like excitement, yeah. So we'll see what we'll see what you get. Big Rita, big Rita taxi, big yellow taxi by Rita Aura. Let's get you some signifiers to help you know if this is going to be a reading or not. So I'm going to get some Scrabble tiles. Um, they may spell out a name. They may kind of kind of spell something out, but not quite. It may make you think of a certain word, a certain person. It may you may get something from it. You may not. Don't panic if you don't get something. You may feel differently when I start to pull cards it's like imagine this like the signifiers are like little waves like the little hellos from your guide saying this might be your reading so uh if there's something in there it's just your, your guides going hey pay attention if there's nothing in there it's just like maybe it's not your reading maybe I don't know maybe it's something else you can also check out your other placements as well if you don't know your full birth chart there's a link in the description box down below that will take you to a website where you can find that out there's other websites available I'm not affiliated it's just it's there if you want to use it right so yeah, you may find other placements fit you a little bit better. For example, if you're looking for love, your Venus placement is going to help you with that. Um, how you take action, that's going to be your Mars placement. Uh, friends, social situations, that's your Mercury placement. So go and check those out and see, see what that gives you. Okay, let's see. What do we have here, please? So Sagittarius, you've got eye. A lot of people have eye because I'm actually doing a you and them reading. So uh, eye's coming out a lot as me, I, the the person the reading is for you know so i they're giving me i i captain so that could be for somebody i are hopefully it doesn't say a 
Nobody wants to be dealing with the IRA, right? Um, I mean, maybe. Maybe you do. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why that came through. I'm sorry. Uh, I was thinking inland revenue, but I think that was... Uh... Or if maybe there is somebody who's at, like um, part of some kind of uh, military background, perhaps. Again, whatever you get from it. That's giving me like raffia, you know, like you you make clothes out of raffia. It's like a, a prom kind of material. Fae, maybe some of you identify as like fairies or fae. Yeah, fairy. That's fairy. Yay, we've got the fairies coming in this reading. Nice. I love a nice fairy reading. They're very fun. They're very playful. So maybe I'll use my fairy cards for this one. Okay, it doesn't have to be that again. Whatever you're getting from it, take it. If you're not getting anything, leave it. I'm also kind of getting Aria, Game of Thrones. You can get all sorts, right? It's whatever. Whatever you, uh, whatever you get from it. I don't know. Air, maybe some air signs coming in here. What else, please, for Sagittarius? So, uh, signifiers for Sagittarius for Wednesday. Signifiers for Sagittarius for, for Wednesday. Who is this reading for, please? Uh, we have Glance. Maybe you're glancing at somebody. Somebody's glancing at you. Maybe somebody's called Lance. <laughs> Lance Armstrong. Nothing. You've got this little one. Why? 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 Um... And yes as well, it could be yes and night. Okay, bit of alliteration there with the ends. Uh, you've got four, one, 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 one as well right now. Okay, what's the four, one, one? I don't know, you tell me. Nothing, why? <laughs> right, Sagittarius, do I want this deck? You're feeling a little bit more, you're feeling a little bit more magical. Let's go let's go sacred forest again with the trees right paved paradise put for parking lot feels feels like where you want to go the, the energy and transformation cards is trying to show themselves there's the butterfly again there's a couple couple of butterflies in sagittarius's reading okay so tell me about sagittarius's energy for wednesday whoa straight away uh pure spirit and water spirit uh, purification and manifesting dreams you may just make sure you're drinking enough water you may have to drink a little bit more water you may want to have a nice cleansing bath uh, purification manifesting dreams this purple is on her dress and in the background here and then there's this otter here on this card as well so what is that giving me um manifesting dreams there's two otters so yeah maybe somebody's looking for a bit of a soulmate here a playmate a friend uh, somebody to spend some time with, um, manifesting this, you know, envisioning it. Could be something to do with like the ice melting, you know, winter turning to spring as well. Like uh, the ice crystals melting and turning into rivers. You may be around a river that's kind of flowing quite quickly at the moment. Water may help you to manifest your dreams. Um, and if you're manifesting from a pure space, that's always going to have better results. So what do you really need? What is the, uh, when you boil everything down, when you look, when you peel back the layers, when you look under the surface, what are you really looking for? What do you really need? Um, and maybe it is just somebody who you can play with, right? Somebody who you can go swimming with, perhaps. Uh, you know, who's going to come with me to the swimming baths? Who's going to come with me to the beach? Who's going to come with me for a walk in the woods? Like, uh, I want to have some fun here. You know, maybe that's all you need. You just need something quite simple. Like a simple, friendly relationship. Somebody to play with. Um, but yeah, water could definitely... Is that pure spirit or pine spirit? Pine spirit. Maybe pine trees, pine needles could be significant to you somehow. Uh, maybe you have an area with a lot of pine trees. You know, um, evergreen trees, Christmas trees. Um... Yeah, water could help you to manifest. I definitely feel like water helps with my spiritual connection, you know, uh, with meditation and things like this. Um, I know uh, Amana, Amana Pepe, is she called on Twitter? She um, she's she does a lot of uh, tips on manifesting things. Uh, and she says you uh, you get a glass of water and you speak to the water and you tell it, uh, you, you tell it what you want as though you already have it. So if it's, uh, I want, 
I want £12,000 in my bank account. You say, you say to the water, thank you, universe, for giving me the money I need. Thank you for having that £12,000 in my bank account. If you want to have, like, romance, you say, um, thank you for bringing the romance that's right for me into my life. Um, you know, you, you speak like you already have it, and then you drink the water. Uh, I don't know if that will work for you, but worth a try, right? <laughs> no harm, no foul. Um, okay, what else do we have, please, for... My lovely Sagittarius's, and I always make sure you're doing it with positivity as well. So manifestation is really important. Um, what you speak about, you bring about, what you dream about, you bring about. So uh, you want to make sure you focus on positive experiences and positive things and doing it from a pure, well-intentioned place because karma is a thing, you know, what you put out there comes back at you. If you're putting bad stuff into the world, it's going to come back at you. And you, you know, like the world's a bad, <laughs> let's be honest here, let's have a reality check. Sagittarius, the world's bad enough as it is at the moment, right? We don't need any more drama, any more conflict. Like, that's enough of that. <laughs> like, my guys are being funny. But like, sit down, shut up. <laughs> like, behave yourselves. Um, okay. Not you. They're not saying it's you. They're saying it's the people who need to be told that, right? <laughs> I don't know who my guide is coming through, but they're very, like, old school. It's like, give them a clip around the ear. You know, like, they're showing me, like, when you... Like people used to get somebody by the ear, like a little kid, and it's like you're not, you're naughty, you've been in trouble. So I think my guys are wanting to tell off <laughs> some of the world leaders right now. Uh, it's a funny image. Um, okay, <laughs> sit down, behave yourself. Listen, that's enough for one night. <laughs> All right, what do we have for them, please? So we've got Sagittarius this energy lovely otters there love the otters and we've got uh wise woman of the grove yeah it feels like grandmother <laughs> it feels like grandma right um like my granny right my mum's mum um wise woman of the grove so you've got somebody oh sorry you've got somebody around who's uh who's gonna tell you off Sagittarius if you get out of hand I think uh not necessarily right I want to say that this person's got really good intentions you know they have everyone's best interest at heart they've been around a long time I want to say so whether this is somebody who's living or an ancestor for you some kind of spirit guide I don't know um grace as well maybe grace is somebody's name um yeah I think it's that sort of old school energy of whatever you're doing do it with grace whatever you they're giving me giving me a song hold on god put a smile upon my face god give me give me something god keep it god put a smile upon my face I can hear the music but hang on like they're giving me more hang on It's like, hmm, do, 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 do. <laughs> I can't do it. I want to say maybe it's stereophonics. God put a smile upon my face, something like that. Um, okay. Wise woman of the grove and grace. Uh, so maybe this is the sort of person, thing this sort of person would have said, you know, God put a smile upon my face. I'm going to use it. You know, God, God, I, this, you know, again, take out like the your own belief system out of the equation for a second we're talking about an individual around you so it's the sort of person who'd say something like god put a smile upon my face so i'm going to use it god uh, allowed me to smile so i'm going to do more of it you know like it, god gave me a smile for a reason it's that kind of energy of uh you know whatever you're doing do it with grace whatever you're doing um kind of like old school like keep smiling and carry on kind of thing uh that's kind of energy of it why is woman at the grove so it could be somebody around you who can give you really good advice right now. Definitely feels old school. Funny with the ear thing. Elves and playfulness. Yeah, it could be like a t like some kind of like teacher energy. Kind of giving me like Mary Poppins as well. Mary Poppins had that kind of old school. Um, she was very graceful. You know, she took everything in a stride, but she had authority with it, you know, and like, uh, you know, she could have fun. Maybe like matron, like give me like ooh matron, uh, kind of energy. Who's this? This is funny. Let's go to the fairies because, yeah, especially with playfulness like, and happiness and purity and beauty, like all these lovely qualities. There's there's a really nice energy to your reading. Like as I say, it kind of came through like. Looking for a playmate, looking for someone to have fun with, being very sweet, very very 
pure, authentic, playful, all these qualities that are associated with Sagittarius energy. Some of you are like, Hell, I am not pure. <laughs> you are you are a bit of a pure soul in terms of like in a similar way to libra like that kind of like honesty uh being very upfront um you know not wanting to play games unless you are playing games <laughs> again we're like complicated right we're uh, we've got a lot of different placements in our birth charts which uh i don't know okay sagittarius tree wisdom look at this all this tree energy coming through this tree dryad would help you navigate through your current situation her flute I swear I was getting flute first, Scorpio. Her flute can reveal insights and answers through the sound it makes. Could be your own voice, right? Your own singing, your own nature's flute. That kind of came through in, with uh, with Scorpio with like the neck and the throat. And they're showing like a They're telling me read again. I don't know if somebody plays like a reed instrument. Oh, my left hand's gone weird again. I don't know. I don't know what that energy is. Um, maybe somebody's like the sort of person who like even like gives you a tap on the wrist. You know, ow, like, ow. You know, like when you're being naughty, it does have that old school energy to it. Uh, which obviously don't be striking children. I don't feel like I need to. Do I need to say that? I don't know. Because um, they had Piper. They had Piper in their their reading. Um, Scorpio. Like the Pied Piper. Flourish. It feels like grace, beauty, playfulness, flourish. All these lovely qualities coming through. It's funny, I was talking in one of my readings about um, how my granny used to, like, she used to get me and be like, I don't think she was Sagittarius. I don't know. I'll have to kind of look up her placement. But she used to, when I was really little, she'd, she'd go, should we go and see the fairy? And like she'd get me my hand and we'd creep up this, um, you know, like the alley behind the backs of people's gardens. And we'd go to the end and there was like a, a big old house with like quite an overgrown garden. And she'd be like, can you see the fairies? And like there was no fairies there, you know, it was all like imagination and make believe and pretend. But um, yeah, I definitely feel like they, like my granny energy coming through with this reading today. So, um, you know, she was like, you know, hair up in curlers, you know this kind of thing very much about presentation which i'm not about <laughs> uh the lotus flower fairy tells you to learn from experience and shed your inner light on any unclear areas of your life or those of others she's huge sharing sh shining this light so it could be talking about your own experiences your own past your own memories and drawing on those to shed light onto your current situation. What would grandma have said? What advice would grandma have given me in this situation? And even if it's not your grandma, right? It's like, you know, anyone who's from your past, what, what advice would they have given me if they were here now? Again, purity. Again, third time. So you had up, up here, purification. Um, and here, purity. These are like two different decks as well, right? And then pure intention manifestation look purification manifestation you cannot make this up pure intention the fairy of manifestation will help you to use your wishes wisely manifest your heart's desire with pure intention and for the highest good of all like i love it i love it um where did i put that book i'm gonna read that card pure intention let's read the whole thing I'm going to have a sip of my uh, my coffee, though, before I do. Hold on. I've got a uh, very thematic because I've been getting a lot of Doctor Who references in the readings for the past uh, couple of weeks. So I've got a little Doct Doctor Who cup. It was like from an Easter egg as well, like <laughs> from years ago. Um, okay. Doctor Who as well uh, talks to me about Pisces energy. Um, there's a specific, um, sorry to kind of go off on one here. But there's a specific card from this deck. This is the Good Tarot. Um, and um, a long time ago, like we're talking years ago, this, this card as well, this, uh, this card kind of has the same meaning to me. Um, but there's a specific card and it's the Page of Cups. And a long time ago, it came through for me with this message of um, like boiling something down to its pure form. Like uh, really... You know, taking a situation or taking some feelings, here it is, taking some feelings or taking a situation and really looking at the roots of it, really saying like, what is the core truth of this thing? Or, you know, what is the, when I peel back the layers of this situation, what's non-negotiable? What's the, 
you know, what's the real feeling behind it? Like, what are the bare bone truths of this situation? Like, what is the purest form of these feelings? Um, and the page of water as well talks to me about unconditional love. So it was like, you know, when you answer all the questions, when you look at something from all different angles, um, you know, what's left is love. What le What's left is pure, unadulterated, unconditional, like, genuine love. Um, and then these two cards, they kind of help carry this kind of Piscean energy for me or this Neptune energy of like um, when children still believe in magic and fairy tales and like, you know, when they, when they still have that ability to dress up and pretend and, and have make believe and like, you know, pretend to be uh, the the elf king of the woods or the, you know, the, the little mermaid fairy tale princess. It's like, you know going into environments like taking them to the beach or the, the water or the ocean and or the forest and watching them play and like seeing them um seeing them to pretend to be something else and the the real magic power of that and it is pisces's magic power or neptune's magic power of um of um being able to envision something different for yourself. So this is why stories are really important. Fairy tales, uh, make-believe, uh, the, the power to imagine, you know, books, movies, uh, sci-fi, you know, Disney movies, uh, because they show you that you can live your life a different way. If, if you never have any, if you grow up in a bubble and all you know are the belief systems and, you know, these situations that are around you, it's like everyone in my family was a farmer. So therefore, the only thing that I know is open to me is to be a farmer. But what if, you know, one day you were working the field and someone, um, I don't know, someone showed you a movie of um, a pilot, excuse me. So sorry. So and then maybe you watched a movie about somebody who played the piano uh, and you were like, that's amazing. I wish I could play the piano. And then it's like, you know, you go to your grandma's house and she's got a piano and it's like, teach me how to play the piano. So it's like you wouldn't have never wanted to be a pianist if you hadn't um, if you hadn't experienced the idea or entertain the idea or been shown the idea that that was a possibility but it's like when you entertain the idea it's like then it becomes something that's achievable or something that you can work towards and maybe you're not going to be the elf king or the little mermaid but maybe you're going to be a marine biologist or an ecologist right um it's 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 giving children experiences so that they can uh widen their uh widen their knowledge of the potential for their life, the potential for their future. So, but this specific page of water card has been coming out um, off camera for me a lot. And on camera for one of my favorite readers who's Santaro, it's like this, the page of water uh, from another deck as well, from the, um, the steampunk tarot. So, but the page of cups has been coming out almost every time I, I pull cards and in most of Santaro's readings because I was thinking that's so strange that the card that's coming out for her is also coming out for me. So um, this pu the idea of this card meaning purity to me, um, the the bare bones of a situation. You know, when you pull back, when you pull back everything, all the kind of complicating factors. It's like, well, what do you want? What does what's your heart telling you? What's the What's the raw emotion of this situation? Uh, that's kind of what it, it's talking about. It's like the Little Mermaid's dad there, right? The King of Water. Um, it's like when it boils down, yeah, when it, when, it, when, it, when it all boils down, this is what's left. Um, okay, so pure intention. The fairies are usually very happy and willing to help us manifest our wishes as long as these are, on, are both from our heart and not for selfish reasons. It's also important that your wishes don't impose on the free will of others and that your wishes are for the highest good of all concerned, including the fairies. This means turning into your inner wisdom. It, if it feels right, you can also call on the fairy of manifestation to supercharge your wish. Here's a wonderful wishing technique using dandelion seed heads, no way, that's so funny, uh, which are full of wishes just waiting to be carried into the air, fueled by your wise and wishful intent. Hold one of these fluffy seeds, one of these fluffy seed heads to your heart and visualize your wish. Imagine that your wish has already come true, including your thoughts, feelings, and emotions when the wish has been fulfilled. Like I was talking about, speak it to into the water, right? Uh, so when you're manifesting, speak as though you already have it. 
um, it's ha and have gratitude. Thank you for bringing, making my wishes come true. And then take, take a deep breath, fueled by your wish, and blow the seeds into the air. Know that the wish seeds will be collected and protected by a sylph wish guardian, one of the many tiny fairies who dwell in the air. The sylph will take your wish to the queen of the sylphs and ask her to manifest it for you. It's important to give thanks to the sylphs once you've blown your wishes away. Thank you sylphs for taking care of the wish that I made a little while back um, on some dandelion seeds um, or a dandelion head, right? The beauty of making wishes in this way is that you're also helping the plant to spread its seeds far and wide. When you help nature, you automatically assist the fairies too. So this is a wise way to create a win-win situation for them and you. When I was really little, I've got a picture somewhere. <laughs> My mum wanted a picture of me blowing a dandelion head, <laughs> you know, the seeds off a dandelion clock. And um, <laughs> I breathed in. So she took the picture because this is like, you know, when, you, you know, the picture you took was the picture you got. It's not like you could take 100 pictures on your phone. It was like you had like, what, 30 pictures on a film and that was it. So I, was, I went to blow, but I breathed in and I breathed in the dandelion head. I had all these bits of dandelion in my mouth. Um, so uh, Leo, they're telling me, like a, a lion's mane. So that could mean something to somebody. Uh, yeah, okay. So if you don't know what a dandelion clock is, like she's kind of blowing one there. You know, we used to say that's how you tell the time. You know, however many puffs it took to blow all the seeds off the dandelion clock, that's what time it was. Not a very, a very effective way of telling the time, but perhaps an effective way of making wishes. Um, yeah, I did a wish. Purity again. This is crazy. Like, I swear, like, I swear, not all these cards are about pure, pure stuff, right? Flexibility, renewal. It's not all purity and you're getting all the purity cards. So I did make a wish from the heart a while back and I hope that's uh, coming true because it was one of those like this is what I want but you know like I want what's best for the other people as well um you know bring bring the people what's best for them if I'm um uh, if that involves me if I can be a part of this these things then that's great but like make sure these other people are happy and uh yeah I hope that that is uh I hope that's working out <laughs> on that wish all right let's see let's see what we have i'm feeling tarot de la nuit but no no people no the good tarot first um i'm in a field by i'm in a field of dandelions is playing for me ruth b i'm in a field of dandelions I'm going out for a walk with my daughter because she's Sagittarius and so funny. I was like, right, give me a song for Sagittarius. And I've got this Paved Paradise put in a parking lot song. Um, and I was just thinking to myself how she loves being outdoors. She loves being around the trees and things and how it's a nice day. And it's a perfect day to go and like wander around the fields. And, you know, maybe I'm going to stumble across some dandelion heads while we're out there. Ace of Fire. So you've got some kind of idea, right? I'm telling you, you're ready to hit that accelerator on something. The Ace of Fire is a creative spark. It's an idea. It's um, a light bulb going off in your head, like something that you're really enthusiastic about, something that you're really, like, you, you're thinking, oh, this like, feels like something really good. It feels like a really great idea. I want to put all my en energy into this thing. It's new. It's exciting. It's fresh. It's fun. Like, it's really attractive to me. I want to do the thing. And I think there's even a fairy on this card. There's like a little uh, Tinkerbell fairy on this one one um so i swear not it's not all fairies like this deck this deck not all fairies <laughs> she seemed to be getting a lot of fairies and a lot of purity um and it is very pure the ace of fire as well it's 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 like um a fresh match being struck or a candle being lit for the first time um somebody i think it was leo had this thing about fire being cleansing fi fire being purifying right if you think of like a wildfire it it goes through the the undergrowth and kind of like clears out all the old dead shrubbery and trees so that the new things can sprout so that the sun can get through the can canopy to the the floor level and like the seedlings can sprout again this thing about like seeds and dandelions and something coming through with that could be talking about children you know uh life and life and death cycles um hey tell me about the other energy Ooh, look at this yeah cool energy the magician so this person's helping you to manifest something uh they the magician has 
all the tools that they need at their disposal to make your dreams come true or to make somebody's dreams come true or to make something happen so they take the ideas and this is the idea there's nothing tangible to this it's like um it is like a match it can burn out really quickly if it's not um tended to if it's not given fuel it can be an idea that burns away as quickly as it starts especially i mean i've got a mars placement in sagittarius and it's uh it's very squirrel <laughs> it's very oh look at that thing oh look at that thing shiny shiny you know um you can be very easily distracted so um if you have something that's like a really good idea a bright spark of an idea um you're going to want to get some tinder on that right um but you may not be able to manifest this entirely by yourself so you need this companion energy this friend this playmate this person who like you know that i want to say that like they could get just as fired up about this as you uh so the magician comes along and the magician has um all four tools of the tarot so they've got the cup the wand the sword the pentacle like everything you could possibly need the emotions the passion the uh, practical skills and knowledge and uh the um the logic and the the communication skills to kind of like get something off the ground to get that fire kindled so it's interesting actually it's never come through this way before for me but you know you see it's in this lantern it's almost like the lantern's protecting the fire it's protecting the idea so it's like um okay we don't want it to blow out you've got this idea we don't want it to blow out too quickly so let's like start um let's start building a structure around this idea let's start to make this something that's it just yeah it feels like building around the flame like adding to it um and that's what this this energy is doing. Sorry, very noisy, uh, noisy street, noisy neighbors, noisy house today. I'm sorry, guys, um, but it's like just feel like it has this in the shadows energy. Like maybe it's like some sort of spirit guide. It could just represent the universe in general, right? Could represent God, whatever you know, whatever this energy represents for you. But it's like um, feels a little bit like it's guiding you, right? It's guiding you to what you need, right? What you need. So it's like, okay, you want to make this happen, so you're going to have to get some resources together. You're going to have to get some supplies here. So I'm going to kind of like shine my light or feed you intuitive messages to get you to the, almost like the pentacles that you need to make this happen. So, you know, the 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 money, the resources that you need for this to happen. The Lotus Flower Fairy helps you to learn from experience and shed your inner light on unclear areas of your life. Yeah, so this feels like a guidance system. It could be your own internal guidance system based on the, um, it's got this feeding energy to it, like feeding the fire, like feeding you information, feeding you, feeding you experiences. And it could be, it could, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be one person, right? It could be, uh, you, your entire experience as a human being on this planet, you know, everything that you've learned, all the skills that you've built up, all the lessons you've learned, all the um, problems you've faced and the problem solving skills that you've built up. It's like every, you have everything you need, but there's something like this, this energy is kind of like, it's been feeding you, like ever since you were born, it's been feeding you. Uh, and like they show me like plant food, like you're the plant, right? You're the dandelion. It's like they've been feeding you like plant food and nutrients and knowledge, like everything you could possibly need to, up until this point, like get, it's like you already have all the resources you need to do something. So what is this? Why do they want me to use this deck for you? Because you've got all this like fairy tale energy to your reading. Oh, the devil. Hi. And the empress. And nine of wands. And all right. Love it. Um, so a while back, uh, these three cards came out together. Uh, this tea party energy as well. Yeah, very much down the rabbit hole energy. Um, it's like, uh, I say, I think my daughter's friend's here. So things are getting a little bit loud. Um, it's got this energy. Like I say, we're going to go um, have a bit of an adventure. So... My daughter being Sagittarius over enthusiastic so she can't wait for me to finish the reading and be like I'm gonna get ready now let's get your friend over you know she has to immediately be like come over we're gonna go out later it's like can you just let me get dressed <laughs> you know can you just give me a chance here like could you say come over at a certain time no the dandelion clock says no so um yeah so this talks to me uh, it came through I think in a Libra reading could have been Scorpio I'm not quite sure about the sleeping princess like sleeping beauty it's like um it was like this empress is also a high priestess so she works in the 3d right she works 
in the light of the day, in a tangible way, with practical skills and knowledge. You know, she's she's awake, she's doing like practical things. But it's like when she goes to sleep. So at night, in her subconscious, she goes into the 5D and she starts to do the work on the 5D. So we could just talk about subconscious things, you know, like how people say that when you dream, that's your subconscious working through stuff, like dealing with things, like like the filing system of your brain right so it's like um that subconscious work that you do at the night time or when you're sleeping or when you let your mind wander and what she's doing is going down the rabbit hole which is talking about this inward journey into your own self right into your own shadow to go and confront the devil and to to face your inner demons uh because the nine of wands is like the wounded warrior card it's somebody who's um on a long journey, a long journey of self-discovery, a long journey of shadow work, a life journey, right, of figuring out who we are, uh, what are our own Achilles heels, uh, what holds us back, uh, where do we self-sabotage, where do we, uh, what, what are our fears, you know, all these things that are associated with this kind of like devil energy, addictive behavior, patterns of behavior that are self-destructive, um, and figuring them out, and then going back and saying like, why do I do those things, why do I act that way, why do I feel that, why do I, um, like why does this bother me and then what's the root of that again this kind of like the core the root the root of all evil I don't want to say that like the page of cups was coming through that evil energy it's like what is the root cause of all my behaviors and normally it is something quite simple and it's like when you realize it you can change it right when you realize that you can change your future and break out of those groundhog day type patterns of behavior just thinking Scorpio had groundhog day um I was also talking to Scorpio's reading about um uh, an experience I had with my my best friend growing up when we were like quite young teenagers uh we used to go out exploring this kind of like field area um and it was like you know sets of fields or like green space um and there was an old disused railway track a railway way tunnel in that area it was like completely out of, it wasn't even like a full railway track there was no re there was no way a train was going to come along it right it was like a section of track and then it had been destroyed and built over and things like this so we would go through this train tunnel and it was a really long tunnel and it had a bend in the center um and so you you would go in and you couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel as you were going into it and you had to like on faith walk away from the light at the other end of the tunnel into the pitch blackness like not knowing what was in there right there could have been like like badgers and foxes and rats and I don't know like people looking in the shadows like you didn't know it's part of the kind of like the rush as well the rush of um like the rush of fear the excitement of that which is very Sagittarius but going into this tunnel and you get to excuse me the halfway point I think somebody opened the door and it made a you know when the air pushes the door um so like going it's made me jump though it made me jump as I'm talking about the scary part of the reading uh so going through this tunnel and you get to the middle section and there was a point where you lost the light behind you as you went around the corner you lost the ability to see the light be behind you and you couldn't see the light in front of you so you had to like take probably maybe like 10 steps, 20 steps in pitch black until you saw the light at the end of the tunnel, right? And you could walk towards the light. So there was this period in between of like darkness. So it can sometimes, I think this analogy could talk about like the dark night of the soul or through difficult periods of our life. Oh my goodness, the neighbor's dog now. Um, difficult periods of our life where uh, we're facing our inner demons, we're facing uh, dark nights, uh, whatever this means, Batman again coming up. Um, but yeah, it just feels like this inward journey or the need to take a lot of rest. The need to take a lot of rest, to be exhausted in the daytime when you're doing a lot of shadow work or, uh, you know, work on the subconscious. You know, it's exhausting. It's, it's you know, it's, it's mentally exhausting as well as physically exhausting. So, uh, you know, energy can be spent in different ways. So that's very much what this talks about. But then it's like going down there and kind of... Um, like Alice in Wonderland, it's like Alice's tea party, right? Finding the Mad Hatter and the, you know, the it's a bunny rabbit, but there's that little mouse, right? Like twinkle, twinkle, little bat. So, um, oh my goodness, puppy, please. Puppy, please, I'm trying to do a reading here so I can take my door around to the wheels. It's like, this always talks to me, with it being the Three of Cups, it's like finding the other weirdos, right? Find, like being really authentic, being, really being yourself and finding the other people who... Um, the people who like who you really are, right? Taking off the mask. There's been a lot of stuff about mask wearing and trying to be the hero that other people want you to be, right? Trying to be perfect for other people when perfect, say, 
perf being so, like perfect people is the biggest lie that we're ever told normally by consumerist societies right um nobody's perfect and when you realize that and when you have that self-acceptance and the unconditional love for the self of like i actually quite like who i am faults and all um you actually allow yourself to be authentic and then the people who genuinely like you for who you genuinely are will start to come into your life and it's like you can like them as well like you know the odd you know everybody's odd Every, like here's the big right again the biggest lie ever told is that anyone is perfect nobody is perfect do not ever put anyone on that pedestal because you'll just be disappointed right because you it's a fantasy it's an illusion that people can be perfect everybody's human and fallible so um and everybody is weird and this is the biggest secret that everybody's a bit weird everybody has some kind of weird like geeky thing that they're into or like an odd behavior like behind closed doors everybody's a bit weird you just don't know like you don't if you think somebody's perfect you just haven't found out their own unique brand of weird yet and maybe you'd open that door and see them dancing like <laughs> showing me um what's it called stardust or something um uh, Robert De Niro plays this kind of pirate captain and he's he he kind of he likes dressing up in women's clothes and he thinks that his crew doesn't know but his crew totally know um and it's like that kind of energy it's like and then he finds self-acceptance his crew's like you know you're still our captain you know like <laughs> you're great you know um and he gets at the end of that movie he gets that acceptance so it's like um opening the door and seeing something and being a little bit shocked and being like what okay <laughs> okay that's that's who you really are okay that's what you do behind closed doors and are you okay with it or are you not okay with it you know it's like if you're not okay with it that's that's okay too you know that's that own person's thing and you don't have to like it you don't you know th this weird expectation that you have to like everything that everybody else does but you know what does that mean um uh, if you're honest with yourself and then also like maybe you do you know like it maybe you're into it maybe you're like oh my god i do that too so um and it's okay if somebody if you're doing something weird and somebody opens the door and sees you and they don't accept it it's okay it's that's their journey right it just means that you know now it's like well now i know now i know that that person doesn't accept me for who i actually am now i know that i'm never going to get unconditional love from that person and that's okay you know thank you universe for showing me that because now i don't have to worry about that person anymore i don't have to try and please that person anymore i don't have to try and get that person to like me anymore i can move on with my life and actually go and uh, find the people who do accept me for who I am you know I can go and find my my gang of pirates <laughs> you know whatever that is for you so this is the weird gang there's a card in here as well I get it's card. it keeps coming out for Santaro um and I like it I like the way she talks about it because I'm like I, I like that it makes me smile let me just see if I can find it like the band of weirdos <laughs> the band of weird friends the band of misfits I think is what she calls it just try and find it and here it is <laughs> see what i mean it's like uh the sanct sanctuary like the friends the the you know the friends who who see your weirdness and accept you and vice versa like it's it's really nice so um yeah that's what you're up to you're going to figuring out you know fighting your own inner demons coming to terms with them coming to terms with who you really are um Finding that self-love, that self-acceptance, and then finding the the courage and the strength to say, this is my pure form, this is who I really am. Who wants to come and be friends with me? And if you want to, if you want to leave, there's the door. You know, I'm, that's fine. You know, if it wasn't meant to be. And so, what's going on here, please, with the the energy outside of Sagittarius? Knight of Wands. Oh no, yeah, they like you. <laughs> they like you. If this is a love interest, whoa magnetically magnetically attracted to you or you're magnetically attracted to them like two magnets like coming together i feel like this is that this is a big draw this is this is somebody who shares that enthusiasm for something you've had the idea they're well into it <laughs> like they are like this is the greatest idea anyone has ever had in the history of humans and i am fully on board that's what that energy is so i like that yeah that's a pretty uh pretty good person yeah we're into it we're going <laughs> Are you coming with me? Are you going to come through this door with me? Hell yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Nice. Nice reading. So what do we want to get for you in terms of advice? 
feels appropriate to go animal spirit oracle um so what do we have here please what do we have here as advice for anyone who is resonating with this reading frog spirit clear out the clutter Ugh. Ugh. do i have to spirit guys trying to get us to tidy up again snake spirit time to heal yeah there is something that's being shed a skin that's been shed and i want to say with the readings kind of the common thread that's been coming through the readings especially since like leo and virgo is this thing about um and libra with the song perfect by alanis morissette it's, it's releasing the need to be perfect for others releasing the need to uh play the hero uh and to wear that mask of uh perfection like gilderoy lockhart as well was coming through it's um it's accepting that nobody is ever going to be perfect and we shouldn't expect ourselves to be perfect. Dealing with that, accepting our faults, um, that doesn't mean being a terrible person, right? That doesn't mean being like, oh, you know, it's just, you know, of course I'm going to cheat on everybody. It's just who I am. I mean, it's it's like, you know, you've got to put it into context. You know, if you if you are the sort of person who wants to have a lot of romantic partners, for example, just like with the Knight of Wands here, doesn't necessarily mean that. But as an example, if you're the sort of person who's like, do you know what? I don't, I'm not into committed relationships. I want to have open relationships. Then, you know, if you're with somebody who is like, I am monogamous, I want you to be mon monogamous, then is that actually going to really work out? You're like two pieces of different jigsaw puzzles. So either you stay in that relationship and you really maybe be quite miserable because you feel very trapped and it's not who you are and yet you're putting that other person's needs first um is it really fair of that other person to expect you to do that if that's not in your nature so if you it is your nature to to want to be quite wild and free and sow your wild oats and things like this then be open up front and honest with that and let people you know be choose whether or not to be in a relationship with you so it could be like um you know, I'd love to have a relationship with you, but I, I'm not ready to be like in a committed relationship right now. I need to keep, you know, I, I, I'm the sort of person who needs to have a lot of freedom, a lot of space in relationships. And maybe, you, you know, you, you're going to meet somebody who's like, yeah, that's how I feel as well. That totally works for me. That's perfect. You know, hopefully if they're being open and honest and genuine with themselves as well, because, you know, you can always run into people who are like, yeah, that's great. That works for me really well. When actually secretly they're thinking, oh, yeah, but in a couple of months, he'll ask me to marry him. And then, you know, then we'll be together forever. And like, he'll never look at another woman again. That's self-delusion, right? So just be careful of the other person. Like the other person really understands that what what you're saying is you know honest um so but yeah you know that can totally work people can totally have open relationships or you know monogamous relationships it's just about being honest with yourself about what you need and uh you know making sure that other person really understands you know what your needs are it kind of came through in uh, scorpio's reading a little bit that as well okay but clear out the cl clutter is your advice so 28 it's like, but it's just being respectful to the other person as well and giving them the opportunity to either say, that's totally fine, I understand that that's who you are and that's what you need and I love you and, you know, that's, um, I'm okay with that or, you know, whether they're going to say, look, that's really not going to work for me, I'm never going to be happy in that situation. You know, it's just, you know, a relationship is between two people. It, nobody should have to self-sacrifice. And if you're self-sacrificing, there's a level, right? There's a level of self-sacrifice that comes along with, like, being in a partnership where you do you do have to acknowledge the other person's needs and, um, you know, you have to create a rule book between you. But, I don't know, relationships are complicated. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> whatever uh frog spirit knows that while all the other frogs are croaking away this is a time for you to simplify and declutter your life so you can feel content on your own lily pad even when life isn't creating a total cacophony we can become drawn to the excitement of lots of noise then the next thing we know hey sagittarius you get drawn to the excitement of lots of noise who knew then the next thing we know our schedules and homes are cluttered with commitments we regret making and objects taking up valuable space even relationships need decluttering as they often become messy. Frog spirit appears to tell you to clean house, prioritise what you need and get rid of or give away the rest so that you can have some space in your day and in your head. You don't need the old stuff and it's stories shouting at you about the past. Along with the physical clutter, friendships are sometimes kept long past their expiration date, weighing you down with unnecessary baggage. Now is the time to let go. 
Whatever you need will appear to you when you need it, so release your grip on all the clutter that is making you feel anxious and burdened. Frog Spirit wants you to reclaim your space, unencumbered by shoulds, oughts and could have beens. Let go and jump. You are free from all that old stuff. Right, I hope that was helpful to you. Again, leave me a like if you liked. Uh, drop me a comment if anything particular resonated and you're comfortable sharing. I'd love to see them. Thank you so much to those of you who, who do leave comments. I really love reading them. And um, if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd appreciate if you subscribed. It's absolutely free to do. And you can hit that notification bell too to know when my readings go live. And thank you, of course, to those of you who have been subscribed for a while. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for sticking around. And if you have any Sagittarius friends who you'd like to share the video with, who you think need to hear it, absolutely go ahead and do that. It really helps out the channel. And of course, Sagittarius, please take care of yourselves. And uh, yeah, stick with it. You seem like you're, you seem like whatever you're doing, you're doing it from an authentic place of self-discovery, of discovery of your own needs, of being very honest and authentic with that. Um, and, you know, just being who you really are and allowing the people who are attracted to that to come to you and not feeling like you have to wear any kind of mask to uh, to please others, which is very, very healthy. So keep doing you. You're doing well. And I will see you again soon. Bye, Sagittarius. I don't know why I said it like that, but I did. Bye, Sagittarius.